All right, I'm back in the shed, and behind you guys is the new car I just bought that I am pretty bloody excited about, so we'll check it out. But before we get into that, we've got to talk about some other stuff. So the night this is uploaded, the next morning, me and Sherry are leaving for the ultimate 4x4 challenge. Uh, we'll be gone for like, I think it's 10 days overall. So there'll be probably a couple weeks there where uh, I've got no videos to upload because I don't have any in the bank and there's not much phone reception up there anyway. So there'll be a few weeks of no videos. But when I come back, there should be yeah, a few ultimate videos. I've got a few jobs to do to this car coming up as well. And then obviously we've got the new car, which I'll start tinkering with. So that's all coming up. But that also means that this is the last video that I get to remind you about the hoodies, shirts, hats, and stubby holders. So when I get back from ultimate four by four, which is the start of October, um, the pre-orders will close a few days after I get back. So this is the last time I get to remind you um, if you want any part of that, the hoodies, shirts, hats and stubby holders, make sure you message me because this is the last time you'll be able to get your hands on any, I probably won't do another run for a long time. So the more orders I get, the more motivated I'll get to potentially go into a website and then further the merch stuff. But um, at the moment, just with how busy everything is, I can't foresee myself doing any merch stuff in the distant future. So if you don't get any this run, you'll probably have to wait over 12 months before I do another one. So hit me up, send me a message on Instagram or Facebook, get your orders in, support the channel because that goes a long way and it's very appreciated. Also, just a quick little update on the shed. Um, I got me welder going and I finally bought me workbench here and I still got to finish it. I've only plated one side. So I've got plate over there to go on the top here. You've got to get a vise. And uh, the compressor's all set up, but I've got to hang the reel up on the wall. But I've still got to continue all the sheeting stuff through. So I've been pretty busy in here, but there's still a lot more work to do. And I had my birthday the other week, and Scotty made this for me. So this is pretty sick. The drawing is actually the new drawing for the merch that Callie drew. Um, she sent it over to Scott, and he put it in his program and made it all cuttable and cut it out on a big bit of steel for me. So. I'm actually pretty wrapped with that. He's just clear coated it. Looks awesome with a bit of rust coming through. So once I finish sheeting this stuff, TV and that to go over there, and then I'm gonna hang this up on the wall, which will look bloody awesome. All right, onto the car. So in one of my videos a couple of weeks back, I mentioned something about doing a budget build car, and I'd been looking for something for a fair while. Um, I didn't really know what to buy, but there's a good story behind this car and we'll get into that in a minute. And I'm actually not sure I want to budget build this particular car. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but it doesn't matter because I've got this new car parked in my shed. So here we go. The car I bought is a 1992 petrol fuel injected GQ Patrol. <laughs> I've got another one. <laughs> But hang with me and I'll get into why I've got this car. So believe it or not, uh, I've actually got probably Sherry to thank for this thing. So this it was actually on my street where I live. Um, and for ages, I've just noticed it parked in his front lawn. I never moved and the grass was growing up uh, underneath it and whatever. I never really took too much notice other than it was just sitting in his front yard. But Sherry come around one day and then he mentioned if I'd seen the GQ on the front lawn down the road. And uh, I said, yeah, I've seen it. And then he goes, you should go and see him and see if he wants to sell it. And I thought, you know what, that's probably a good idea. So I wrote up a letter, I dropped it in his letterbox. I said, if you're interested in selling the car, give me a ring. And then a couple of weeks later, I got a phone call off a random number. It was actually the day after my birthday. So I wasn't feeling the best, but I had this phone call and it was a guy down the road uh, telling me that if I wanted to buy it, I can come buy it. So I raced down the road, had a look at it, 
is exactly what I wanted. Give him the cash. It was actually a like real good price for the current market. I could not turn it down. And then um, I towed it back to my place 100 metres and then parked it in the shed. Also, just a side note, Sherry was really jealous that I got this thing. He's been dying to own a GQ. He, he'll say otherwise, but deep down he knows he wants a GQ. So he was pretty jealous when I showed him a photo of this parked in my shed. So I just haven't had time to touch it actually, but it does look a bit rough. Like the paint's faded and it's got a lot of spider webs and um, like it's been sitting, got all this green mossy stuff growing on the steps and that. Um, but it will clean up all right. It's straight petrol, never been on gas. It's a manual, 300,000 on the cloth and virtually untouched. It's pretty much bog stock. There is nothing other than the different head unit. Um, it's got electric trailer brakes on it because they used to tow a horse float with it. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's just bog stock. It's actually real straight other than this guard. So this guard, he hit a tree or something, pushed the guard in. Um, but I think like that'll come out pretty good. And yeah, other than the condition of the paint, the car is actually pretty straight. It is an ST model, so it's got the electric windows. Um, I've got to fix them though, they don't work. So I've got to look into that. The interior is pretty clean. Um, I mean, it's got a bit of damage around here, but I see they make aftermarket surrounds for these for a relatively good price. So I'll get a new surround for that. She's got the factory alloys. It's got the plastic trims around the side. So it's actually a pretty sweet car. It is build date January 1992, so it'd be the first of the series two. But I just noticed, not be able to see, it's got a still at the series one steering box on it. So the series two went to the 082, which are the biggest steering box, and then the GU. I'm fairly certain they were the same boxes with a different pitman arm. So anyway, interesting to find, but I think I've got a series two box floating around. Well, hopefully anyway. I can throw it on because the Series 1 are junk. So the reason I had to tow it home was he said I had a wiring fault near the battery. And this happened to one of my old ones. This main power wire, it got like a black plug down there and the 6mm wire goes into the loom. Um, that like powers everything, all the accessories and that. And that wire was just broken. So I went and had a look. We seen the wire was broken. The battery was flat. So that's why I towed it home. Um, I've Literally, I had a spare loom at home. I just unplugged the plug, put a ring terminal on the end of the wire, charged the battery up, and it fired into life. Pretty much stock, other than like it's got extractors, which are pretty old because I think if I went to pull them off, I'd be breaking a few studs. Uh, the exhaust is a bit average, like it's got a few holes in the exhaust, so that needs fixing. It's got a, it's got a bit of character, so with a little bit of love, uh, this will get brought back to life. And for the price I paid for it, I just, it's an awesome deal. I just, I could not turn it down. I couldn't get the money fast enough. But that brings you to the point of the whole budget build thing. So, spoiler alert, this is the exact car I wanted to budget build. I wanted to budget build a GQ petrol EFI manual. Like, so this is exactly what I wanted to budget build. But it's really not that often that you come across one that has not been destroyed with dodgy modifications or dodgy wiring or or it's smashed in or you know so it's not very often that you get a nice straight one that's untouched although it's a little bit dirty um you know a couple of bits need cleaning up it's not very often you come across one like this especially for the price i paid so that's why i'm in two minds about budget building it because i don't want to wreck it so these are getting harder and harder to find by the day. They're getting dearer and dearer by the day. And I don't really want to trash it, essentially. But it actually worked out all right because I have been looking for like a practical car to drive around. Um, we sold my wife's car, which was a dual cab Triton Newton new one. Um, and that was like the practical car that I could tow a trailer with or go mountain biking or whatever with. But since selling that, we sold that for a reason. It's to buy a different car, which I mentioned in another video, but I haven't found one yet. So this car will essentially fill that gap. So this will be like my practical road car if I want to go mountain biking or go get some wood with a trailer or, or anything along those lines, just go for a general drive. Um, because 
it's getting scary to drive these something like this around so that's why i just wanted a normal road car i can just hop in turn the key and yeah i can go down a dirt road and whatever so for now that's what this car is going to be so i did put a thing on instagram about uh like i put a question up what car should i budget build if i do a budget build just to see what people would say but at that stage i already knew what car i was going to budget build but i just wanted to hear what people had to say and there was a lot of like um hiluxes land rovers uh, suzuki sierras and and everything like that but the reality is if i do a budget build car like i'm not going to half ass budget build it and it needs to be something that can keep up you know when we go driving in with something like this so the idea was to potentially have it as like a rental car so someone could fly down and they could drive this car and come on drives with us so if i did that with like a sierra or a hilux or something the reality is that they just wouldn't keep up weak drive lines they're slow they're rough um and you'd have to invest too much money to bring it up to a standard where these things you put a front locker a bit of lift some 35s on it it'll pretty much go anywhere without spending too much money on it so if you went down the sierra path or the hilux path like it's just yeah they're just not what i want and also the spare parts i've got a lot of spare parts for these so you know if you've done a cv or any motor problems or anything like that i've got an abundance of spare parts so that was another reason i wanted something like this and another reason i wanted a gq was i wanted to start making like bars and sliders and rebars in the future uh, once i get set up in this shed so it'd be easier just to pull the bar off this or whatever this probably won't have a bar on it um and make it on this car rather than make it on this car and pull all that stuff apart so this makes it easier just to have a car sitting there that i can develop my own stuff on um, and it might go further than bar and sliders and that i don't know but once it gets set up i'll know more but that's just an idea i had the other option was like an 80 series but they're just they're too dear for what they are um and the drive line's rubbish so and yeah if like if you wanted the oh, like i want a petrol efi one and if you want a petrol efi 80 series like the one fz um yeah you still got to pay a fair premium so with a lot of thought and you know I, i've been looking for ages and it just kept coming back to something like this so this would be the best option to budget build for me but like i said i may not budget build this one i might just find another one i don't know yet uh, for now this will just be a road car until next year until i decide what i'm going to do with it but i am going to keep it i'm not going to be selling this or doing anything like that so this is just another car to add to the fleet i'll put on club plates so it doesn't cost me too much to sit around and i'll just enjoy it for what it is so i even chased up a gu housing and a gu steering box um the race car does need a new gu housing but anyway it's sitting here if i want to throw it in something like this but yeah i don't know what i'm doing yet so we'll just play it by ear and see what happens so i guess we should fire it up i haven't started it in a few days so we'll see how it fires up it does need the um valve clearance is done pretty bad we'll see how we go definitely need doing that's an easy job but it runs like runs like a dream shut him down before i gas myself out it runs like a clock really i actually can't wait to drive this thing around so there we have it the new gq like i keep saying i don't know what i'm going to do with it yet but it'll either be a budget build thing or I might lower it and strap a big turbo to it and go drag race some commies. Either way, you will see it on the channel and I will probably document like cleaning this thing up, washing it and getting the windows working and valve clearances, all that stuff, getting it all ready. So stay tuned for all that. And then, yeah, probably next year, the start of next year, we'll work into doing some modifications of this thing. So stay tuned 
And don't forget to send me a message if you want any hoodies, shirts, hats, or stubby holders. Uh, like I said at the start of the video, this is the last video I'm going to remind you because the next video, the pre-orders will be closed. So get onto that quick smart. And I'll see you all in a couple weeks when I get back from Ultima 4x4 Challenge. So we'll see you then.